Hi everyone, it's the YY Westy from Brno. I'm here at Swing Fiction 2019 and I have special guests with me today. Do you pronounce your name Jakub or Jakub? It's Jakub. Jakub. Yeah. And Emeline. Yeah, very simple. <laughs> very simple. But I prefer M. M. Shorter, yeah. And Gigi. Well, that's like a French nickname. <laughs> it's actually my French nickname. Yeah, I'm trying to resist it, but it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other nickname here in Czech? Czech Republic? Kuba? Plenty. Yeah, this is like a familiar way how to say my name. Kuba. Kuba. But nobody calls me like that in West Coast and Vermont. Just Jakub. Mm -hmm. And Just it goes very well with your last name. Jakub Jakubek. It does, yes. That's actually <laughs> it's a, a catchy a one. way how to say my first name. So my first and last name are like... Cute and cuter. <laughs> no, <so> this way. <laughs> How did it happen? <laughs> well, my parents got me the name, and they had the last name already, so they felt like, oh, that could be cool if that would be matching together. And well, that happened, and then my, <laughs> my fate was already sealed. So, mm. yeah, here I go. <laughs> well, not my case. <laughs> not cool. cute. Not cute. <laughs> <laughs> How did each of you come across West Coast Swing? I think it was like in 2008 and I moved from uh, Rainy Island, which is my hometown, to France. And I wanted to start dance again uh, when I was in France, but I wanted to change the dance form. So I went online in Montpellier because I was in Montpellier at that time and just starting to type dance classes there. And this was their article about West Coast Swing or a forum. And it had two links to two videos of Jordan and Tot, which was a pump it uh, video and another mm. like lead and follow on a slow song. And then I watched Pumped It and I was done because I was a fan of hip hop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like doing some hip hop moves into like a couple dancing. It's insane. So the same day, I think I went to an initiation in Montpellier. I remember the teacher was like Joan Rosmad told me to stay because there were social afterwards. And he say like the big dogs are coming so you can see them dance. And among those big dogs was like Maxence Martin, which is like the mm. French champion uh, with all the crew from Montpellier. So, and I think Estelle Bonner was also part of it. And I stayed and I watched them dance and I was amazed because I'm like, this is not choreographed. Well, um, for me, it was similar to, to you because, well, I first saw, without knowing West Coast Swing at all, it existed. I saw a video of Jordan Tad dancing more, and I think back in the times I was still teaching salsa, and uh, I was stealing some moves just because it would look cool, right? <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to fly to different dance, but I had no idea that dance I was seeing was West Coast Swing. And then there were some teachers in Czech Republic who were bringing West Coast Swing, but I was not really interested. It was like, whoa, I'm still dancing my salsa, zouk, uh, contemporary. But then, um, actually in Brno, they created um, an event which was crossover with Zouk. It was West Coast Swing and Zouk together. Also, Maxence Martin, they, uh, they came with Regine here uh, to, to Brno to teach West Coast Swing. And there was just like a small sentence. So he said something about that I can do one leg spin, which in the days, like it was something that I love to do, like I love to turn myself, right? <laughs> so I did that and he was like, well, you can do this in West Coast Swing. I was like, I can do this in West Coast Swing? I'm doing this dance. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, an event, Hungry and Open in Europe also happened to be like two months from, from that event. First seeing a Jack and Jill and I didn't understand how that could be just a lead and a follow. Like mm. that was for me like an incredible opening because from other dances I was used to um, quite elite, leading everything and follow were just like doing the job of following. Whereas like here it felt more balanced. The second click was a social dancing where I got invited from higher level dancers as I saw them in Jack and Jill. And I think I've never experienced it before that someone from the higher level would come for a beginner. So yeah, if you're watching this and you're advanced dancer, come to dance with newcomers because it might change their life and they might become just extremely good dancers in the future. So give it a shot. <laughs> Word. Yeah, and you're right. The fact that advanced or above dancers dance with beginners, that's, I don't know, I didn't experience too many other dances, but I remember when I went to salsa parties, for example, it doesn't happen. You dance at your level. You don't dance with higher level. They don't want to dance with mm -hmm. you. It's a great experience. I think also as a social community, 
Because when you come to West Coast Swing, you don't come just for the dance. You also come for the atmosphere true. and the people. the people. And it's true that when I started, like I also came straight like to uh, an association, which is the Mad Swinger, led by Sebastian Blondin. And I entered this team for like a year and a half. And we were having like outside of dancing, like we're always like staying together, going to restaurants, like hanging out. And this built like a lot as well, like the sense of belonging, mm. like somewhere that I think it's really important for people as well. Yeah, that's what makes people stay, right? Yeah. The community. The community, yeah. How the two pros from different countries partner with each other? Like, was the distance no problem? Well, we met accidentally, like through like many years before we actually partnered. Well, a year before, well, actually. A year. Okay, that told me about many years. <laughs> And then we started the partnership together, uh, and from that moment, we actually also started to travel together. And we decided to, to leave our home bases and live kind of like a nomad life. But how we got to partner was because of uh, Adam and Rita mm -hmm. from Budapest. Budapest. <laughs> We pushed, uh, because they organized um, lady style and men style weekend, a workshop weekend, and they took me for the uh, ladies part, and they decided to take him for the men's part. And what we didn't know is like they actually had like their vicious uh, plan strategy in mind, that. because Rita pictured us together from the mm. start. So it wasn't an accident. Okay, we were asked to also choreograph something together, yeah. so we did. Um, like a styling, which then ended up being also a styling in a couple together. And after the workshop, it, it went like well. Mm -hmm. And people started to talk like, hey, you, you, are you like come partnering? Like, are you thinking about doing something together? Like, Just sure. people who attended the event? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? The students were like, oh, but you're partnering, like, right? Mm -hmm. like, no, yeah. actually, no. <laughs> uh, but actually at Budapest in January, and that's when we performed this choreo that ended up being a team routine from our leader and uh, styling workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rita and Adam announced that we were partnering up. And from Budapest, everything actually, I feel like life decided for us. Because then we just had like offers, offers and offers and offers that shaped our whole schedule together. Mm -hmm. What was your motivation to have a classic routine? So the first one... I felt more as a need to find out what's our potential and just to find like where is where where are we meeting like what's our common common creation universe yeah how did, how did it go you decided and you had to train for it and then you performed the big <laughs> moment the song like chandelier from Ein Sila it's a french uh, singer that i discovered like in a tv show actually and i was watching her video and i watched this one and i'm like damn, like this would be a great routine song. So then I tried to convince him. So I put this one in like some others. And at first he didn't want this because he was like, oh, Chandelier, like he's like overused, like a lot of singers are doing it. And I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying. And then I thought that showing him the video of Ancilla would convince him because she's so powerful as a singer when you watch her perform um, and it actually worked. Mm. Then we went four days in Brno uh, choreographing the skeleton, uh, which was really fun. I think we laughed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then in February uh, we were like changing some stuff and we had like a coaching with Maxime Zoe and we performed it for the first time in March at Made in Swing. Mm -hmm. It was not perfect. <laughs> I remember only one thing, like we almost fall. But uh, at the end, uh, people were crying. Wow. Like most of the crowd were crying. Wow. And they went to us at the end and it was very um, like emotional because like we're like, wow, like we didn't know this routine could have this impact. How did it feel when you got there and to the US Open and perform and made finals the first time, which is an amazing achievement? It was stressful but actually for me it was beautiful uh, because like i've been to the open for seven years before that just as an attendee so now being part of the whole game like it was really intense for me 
And for the prelims, we went last. Then you see everyone and you're sure. <laughs> we didn't watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> the music always took me into kind of like a mode of, I don't know, trends or like however you want to call it, like that you're wherever you are, you don't, you don't care so much about where you are. I always felt like it got me into my body plus into music and somehow linked it together. Like, and suddenly all the mm, rational part of like, that you're performing and that place in front of those people, those judges, it was gone. And it just like takes you to a journey. And I always remember like just being in the beginning and then my body got like into something that I didn't know. And then like getting back to, to my own like, oh, I'm here in the end when just like the music is done. I'm like, oh, it, uh, it is the floor of the US open. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and like bow and just go away. You have a very unique style. It's new to West Coast Swing, I would say. And how did people accept it, especially the pros with the more conservative attitude in the beginning? It's, it's just coming from always a good place. Like, um, it wasn't um, pointing like you're bad, like you're, you're doing something which is not West Coast Swing. They are just making sure that uh, we're still talking the same language. It was more like, um, well, let's help you out to, to make it understandable or like to still respect what was done before because, well, we've never been there. Like we've heard about it, but they've, they've been through that phase like for many, many years and they, they've seen the evolution. They were part of evolution as well. I think of myself and it's personally not as a West Coast Swing dancer, but as a dancer. And I think that what's beautiful with West Coast Swing today is like a lot of people with different backgrounds is coming into the dancing and different morphologies as well. And despite the main principles that we have defining this dance, there is a lot of stylistic choices linked to that. And I love the fact that we can learn from all those stylistic choices and shape our dances differently, trying different suits. So in that way, I think, yes, we've got like a specific suit. And I love the fact that we can respect everyone's suits because it's mm. still choices. Mm. So then it's different if you come into like the competitive aspect of it and you decide like to enter the game, then you just accept the consequences if you're not fitting. Do you feel that your unique style has influenced the dance and its evolution? As I said before, like the dance is is really like abstract thing, and it's like a result of how people are are executing, like how are they doing and how they're treating it, right? And uh, for us as as teachers, um, what creates the, the the shift or changing the dance is not us necessarily. It's like we're being true to ourselves and like sharing what we think is like what we think we're doing and. Uh, as long as they, they un understand and they hear it and they, they find interesting, inspiring, and they actually want to do it, then it probably might change the dance itself with yeah. the time. Like, I don't think about myself as a teacher. I'm more like, I'm sharing what I'm doing. Like, if you want to listen, you're going to listen, but I, I don't put myself above you because you have your own experience and your own knowledge and approaches wow. as well so i can learn from you as you can learn from me as well like this is how it works i love your community oriented attitude it's it's really impressive to hear <laughs> that we are important you are important. <laughs> that's really good to, to know to get that feeling from you well, thank you for that well that, yeah like you're the dance like you you are it's not nothing else like you are <laughs> as long as you do it it's going to exist yeah. One last thing, I watched you perform West Coast Swing demos at Zook events, which in my, in my opinion is a good idea to promote the dance. Mm -hmm. Do you see promoting the dance as one of your goals? That's hard to say. Like, we've been traveling for past two years. Um, and it's like for the crossover events, yes, yes, yes. I think that there are dances which are closer to, to the mindset, like to, to be open for that. So if you're talking about international like promoting, yes, but mainly we still teach at West Coast Swing events, so um, we're kind of limited by that, by the crowd which is coming to the event. We still haven't started our local classes in Berlin, mm -hmm. which is like on the 
on the nice. list right now. So that would be the way how to promote it. So I thought like those cultural events where mm. I'm not sure if for promoting West Coast Spring or just like um, inspiring the different dances. Mm. I see. Uh, mm. But through that, like I thought a lot of Zouk dancers started West Coast Swing and they, they also dance that and just people are just trying to, you know, cross the line between yeah. those and they Makes start to melt together. Yeah. We were in Brazil a couple of weeks ago and those people can dance both and they mm. can also for the song that's playing, they can mix them together and it's not like I'm oh. West Coast Swinger or I'm Zucker, like they kind of don't define themselves anymore, like they just have those different tools for the music which kind of fits both yeah. and they they do both but about just promoting i feel like there is also like an overall trend i mean worldwide mm -hmm. that dancing is starting to be very advertised like with all those hip hop video with mm -hmm. like millennium schools or it's really getting to be a thing and with the tv shows dance with the stars uh world of dance how do we get there how do we get to tv i think there is a lot of like project already like they wanted to do like the US Open on TV like in the US I think it was already like uh, advertised last year like this it was the first time they were on TV uh, I know like a French promoter that um, has a project of getting West Coast Swing to like dance with the stars mm -hmm. so really like on the like top front of what yeah. people see uh, I feel like we have a lot of improvement to do in the way we promote the dancing itself like the quality of our videos uh, for this, I can think like West Coast Swing should uh, inspire them for Zouk because Zouk for this is really more evolved. Like they've got videographer that are like really um, filming like the demo, like the lead and follow and mm. everything in such a way that for a non-dancer, it's really attractive. And I feel like people start to do it like um, Dan, for instance, Yamamoto will like start to explore like those things because it comes from Zouk as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate it so much that you did, did came on my show. And I'm sure that everyone would really get a lot of value from this talk. Thank you. And thank you very much. <laughs> and if you see that, contact these guys, but in advance because they're really fully booked. <laughs> and try to get them to your workshop weekend, to your event. Get private from them. They're amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Sort of. I started shooting. But it's okay. That's okay. You're gonna you have do me checking M's hair. We're not sure like it's possible, but like let's put it on the carpet, um, or on the table. Um, but you can also put it in the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse, Excuse me. me. Hi. We're in the middle of something. You can. You can go. Go, go, go. Never mind. That's okay. We're just recording. Guys. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we're shooting check. a video. Here. Oh. Oh.